pucks on net and, and uh, driving and making a hard night on it. Hello, everybody. Ryan here. Hope you're doing well. Hope your uh, fantasy football team is uh, keeping you afloat. Uh, hope you were waiting all day for Sunday night and weren't let down. I just hope you're enjoying the uh, remaining weeks before the hockey season kicks back up. Uh, we decided to dive into the Pucks on Net archives again for another interview we did. Uh, oddly enough, this one was the day after Kyle Wellwood uh, recorded with us. And uh, it was a hell of a 24 hours interviewing Kyle Elwood and then the next day, you know, meeting up with Kirk McLean and interviewing him. So this was a really good chat. Um, you know, Kirk was a, everybody's favorite goalie growing up. He was a, such a key part of the 94 run to the Stanley Cup finals. And he's also been interviewed a lot. And he always has great stories, but it seems, you know, when we went into this, we kind of said, like, we've heard the same questions always asked to Kirk McLean, and we wanted to conduct a bit of a different interview. So I think, like, within the first 15, 20 minutes, we're asking him about, like, you know, getting traded from the Canucks, which, you know, even then when he discussed this, it was like, it was still a, a sensitive subject. So it was, it was good to chat with him about his his road to the NHL, you know, coming to Vancouver in that trade with the Devils, and just that very tight core Canucks team and then his years after I mean he went to Florida he went to Carolina and finishing off with two seasons in New York with the New York Rangers and you know it's so strange to think that Pavel Bure and Kirk McLean both played for the for the Rangers after that after that run but enjoy this episode we had a lot of fun when we recorded it it's me Gita and Paul on this one so we hope you enjoy this if you haven't listened to it before or in a while you know, we recommend it. It's a great show. And, uh, ooh, if you're looking to join the Pucks on that Fantasy Hockey League, we're going to have uh, a little more information coming your way mm, next week, I believe. Uh, there's going to be less teams this year, though. 14 teams, a bit bigger roster. So if you are wanting to play in the Pucks on that Fantasy League, it is uh, going to be a hot ticket. So be ready. Keep your eyes peeled to our socials and this podcast feed, and we will get that information to you. But, have that trigger finger ready and as you know every year priority goes to patreon backers so uh if you want to be in the pucks net fantasy league and you're not a patreon backer yet hell what better time than now all right here's kirk usual co-host he's not here this week he's playing in his beer league final so in his replay in his you know in, in replacing him we have kirk mcclain so kirk thanks for joining wow. us. wow <laughs> so i, I feel honored <laughs> We don't I had a friend that actually was playing in a beer league f- semifinal, I think it was, last night. Uh-huh. At like at 9, 30, 10 o'clock okay. at night. I'm like, really? Yeah. Maybe they're playing Pretty each other right they now. Were, yeah, North no, Van. Dave didn't North play Van. last night. And Dave's out in eight rings. Okay. Yeah. Um, have you ever been asked by buddies to, can you can you come <laughs> in and play? <laughs> well, I get it all the time, but they, they know better. Um, you know, that's something I gave up pretty much right at retirement. Oh, right? yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't uh, I haven't even looked at a set of goalie pads or equipment since this is what 16 years almost now. But aren't you the big <laughs> first line center on the alumni team? <laughs> well, at the beginning there. I was. Now that I've, I'm a little bit older, I've kind of dropped back to defense <laughs> <laughs> and just let the puck do the movement. Right? So you're a stay at home defenseman. Stay at home defenseman. Murray Barron sure. looking like that. Yeah, yeah. See, I, I, I try to pinch in. Yeah. But then I get yelled at because I just don't really hurry up <laughs> back. <laughs> because I was going to ask you because we had Kyle Wellwood on the show yeah. last night. Yeah. And I was like, "Who's taking better fa- Who's taking better draws on the alumni yeah. team?" But I mean, if you're back staying on the point, yeah. <laughs> well, I was pretty good at one point uh, <laughs> er- early in uh, retirement with the alumni. But no, we, you know, guys like Kyle and Cliffy Ronning, um, you know, they certainly come to our rescue, especially some of these uh, charity games that we go to where we may get ambushed by right. a team. They tell us they're going to send a certain type of team <laughs> or ha- or, right. or um, um, suit up a certain type of team, and bam, they have a, a few younger ringers. <laughs> but, uh, uh, well, Kyle's only 32, 33 yeah. years old, yeah. so he's he, he's still capable of playing the National Hockey League. <laughs> See, I'd want to be backup goalie. I'm like, isn't that the position you want to play? <laughs> <laughs> right now, no, no, <laughs> no. You don't want to play goaltending. I, mean, I watch these guys now. Yeah. You know, even the the, the backup goaltenders. It's uh, they're pretty good athletes. They're you know they're they're um, 
you know what they can do uh, with the speed of the game now mm-hmm. and how they you know they play in their butterfly and they can their lateral movement uh, in their butterfly just freaks me out sometimes because it would <coughs> excuse me it would take me a little bit of time to to try and figure that out yeah. you know i butterflied but nothing nothing to point to, well, to what they did they had um there was a clip yes in last night's game where mark andre fleury was doing cartwheels in full goalie pads <laughs> yeah. well equipment's a little bit lighter than back in the day <laughs> he wouldn't be doing that <laughs> I uh, want to thank everybody for jo- thank you for joining us. Actually, before that, you like you did did you ever try to evo- uh, change your style to butterfly a bit or a hybrid kind? No, of? I you know I I, w- I get labeled as a stand up goaltender and uh, you know this is the the way I was taught, but but yet still to to butterfly when needed. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, angles were always the you know the big uh, the big factor in my game and and what was taught to me by my my mentors, but. Uh, you know, there were situations where, you know, the butterfly was needed, whether a, the puck was passed across and you had the butterfly to get across, or the two-pad slide, obviously. Um, <laughs> you know, the Calgary series, that kind of came to the forefront. But um, but now, I mean, when I watch, I watch uh, goaltenders now, you, you, you dump a puck in from your own blue line, and they'll butterfly and catch yeah. it. And I'm like, well, what are you doing, man? Just stand up and catch it. It makes I, it much easier. I hear this term, I hear this phrase a lot, like they're not making save, they're just blocking it. Well, they're getting in the way of it, kind of. I mean, they're. it's changing a little bit, uh, but <laughs> the players in front of them are so big and so fast. Um, there is a lot of uh, blocking and percentage play um, just because simple reason they can't see the puck. Yeah. So, you know, they... they they know where the initial pass has gone and where the the puck is, but it's tough for them to see it in. Even even if they're down looking for it, it's still pretty tough for them because of the big bodies in front of them. So they're going to try and cover a uh, big part of the net that they think where the puck's going to go, and and hopefully it uh, hits them. These are why the goaltenders are six foot five now and six <laughs> foot six because when they are in their butterfly, they still cover the whole net. Yeah. Um, just want to. Oh, where was I going? Yeah, you anyway. were one of the big guys back in the day <laughs> in the NHL. I you was a big guy, but I mean, yeah. there are some monsters. I was out considered there. a bigger goalie back in the day. That you know, I mean, the Barrassos, mm-hmm. myself, Hextall, um, even well, even Kay Whitmore, who I played right. with, was a was a taller, not taller, but same, probably the same size as me. Who was a smaller goalie than? Ah, uh, well, time? Arthur's Urbe, he was small. Okay. Uh, Greg Millen, he was small. Darren Pang mm. obviously was was probably the smallest. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. Oh, so uh, everyone yeah. from Sportsnet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Mike Vernon was a smaller goaltender, yeah. but not as small as you think. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, you bring up you bring up Artis Urbe and like that, you know, that ninety that ninety seven ninety eight mm-hmm. season is a pretty polarizing season in Canucks history because mm-hmm. that was your that was your last one with the team. You right. were traded midseason. I'm just you know I mean we'll talk about a lot of things, but I'm just kind of curious what was it like starting the season. With Mark Messier on the team, Mike Keenan, your coach, and just that few years removed well, from that run. Well, we started the season that Pat Quinn was our, still our, oh, really? our coach yeah, yeah. GM, and, mm-hmm. and he was um, he was relieved of his duties probably in around I want to say in December, um, not quite. Well, probably not quite halfway through the, okay. the year. Was I can remember where it was. We were in we were in Washington. Yeah, and. Uh, uh, it was the night after a game. Um, I don't know if we we won or lo- lost again. I can't remember. We probably lost it because this is the way it happened. <laughs> but uh, um, it was in the morning. We're going down to the yeah. team team bus, and it was myself. I believe it was Sergio Lamesso and Dana Merzum walking the elevator. And there's Pat. Hey Pat, how's it going? And he, and he just wasn't too happy. Mm-hmm. And then explained to us what happened. And w- it was just silence from then on. We just couldn't believe what what was going on. But uh, yeah, and then Keenan came in. Uh, sometime in, in the new year, I think it was. And when were you traded? Uh, I got traded, prob- I think, late January or early February in in uh, January in ninety eight. Was it January? <laughs> yeah. Do you, yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. Key to the fact. I tried to. Here. I tried. Yeah. It I was tried a dark to, day. For I a tried lot to of forget. Us. Yeah. There was. Well, uh, Pat was obviously the first uh, of that ho- that era to 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 lose his job, and then and then uh, myself, Martin Jelena. Yeah. Got yeah. traded to Carolina, and then it was just a triple effect, uh, trickle effect from there. Trevor and Gino, and um, you know, even the likes of Dana Merzen, who got actually sent down to the minors, believe mm. it or not. And so it was, uh, it was an, a weird feeling, you know. You know, it, it, that's a, that's a different story in, a, in another day. You know what? <laughs> What's the what's the way he like? What was the difference between a team run by Pat Quinn and then a team run by Mike Keenan going in? It was it. I mean, we, you hear a lot of things. You hear a lot of. Well, uh, 
I mean, at the time, Mike was, wasn't really, because we still had Steve Tambellini who was here. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they were kind of co-GMs, uh, uh, so to speak. Uh, and uh, um, But, uh, you know, Mike obviously maybe had a little bit more um, to do with anything, mm-hmm. uh, along with maybe Mark. And, and uh, you know, it was different. You know, listen, Mike, Mike had a wonderful record. Uh, throughout his career, um, whether it be uh, Canada Cups or or just a regular NHL league play, so you can't you can't uh, knock him for any, anything like that. And he, you know he had a obviously a repetition as an iron fist. I'm not saying Pat didn't. Pat certainly knew when to uh, put the hammer down yeah. and and uh, get the best out of his guys. But he was also a real players' coach because of uh, he was the type of guy that. You know, went to bat for his players. He stuck up for his players and never threw anybody under the bus or never tried any head games or anything like that. You know, if 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 he didn't think you were pulling your weight, you mm-hmm. know, he he wouldn't call you out in front of the teammates. He you know he'd pull you into his office and you'd, you'd talk it out. And he showed that level and, of respect exactly. Yeah. Where Mike was quite the opposite. You and know, that's, I mean, know. from your point of view, that's not. Is that the, I don't. F- well, I, I mean, it worked for for you know for a while for him and on every team he went to um i think by the time he got to us it, that type of or that style of coaching maybe started to to trickle out yeah right. um and then of course uh with the veteran players that um that knew his reputation mm-hmm. uh, it, it just, you know didn't really phase anybody other than the fact <laughs> maybe that was the issue well, and he didn't like that so yeah. that's that's what was the sense in the dressing room when you knew that he was the hire um but, you know, you're just kind of, you were, you know, wondering what was going to happen because, you know, like I said, uh, he, you know, his record spoke for itself and you were just hoping that, um, you know, he was going to be able to come in and, and uh, um, you know, help out with what was going on. And it just ultimately became a big disaster, even, you know, after everybody yeah. was gone, it was uh, for a good yeah six, seven years, it was a disaster. <laughs> and of course... Berkey comes back, and yeah. those, his first fire was Mike Keenan. So <laughs> that was something. Could we? We'll maybe roll it back a little bit to yeah. the beginning of your time in Vancouver. I wanted to ask about '87 mm-hmm. coming in. I mean, you're kind of coming into a team similar to the position the Canucks are in right now: yeah. high draft picks, yeah. uh, rebuilding after that '82 run. They're rebuilding after the '11 run. I mean, yeah. do you see a lot of parallels right now from when uh, you came uh, in? A, a little bit, a little bit. Um, but there, there were. They were pretty dark days or near the end of the dark days uh in the from the mid 80s to 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 late 80s you know going into the pacific coliseum there was only you know twelve thousand people mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. at least we're, we're you know a lot of blue uh, seats uh, yeah a lot of blue seats a lot of, <laughs> lot of seats dressed as uh <laughs> as people but um um so it was a full rebuild when when pat and berkey and and the rest of the crew uh came here i don't believe this is my personal feeling i'm not too privy to what goes on um totally in the in the in the hockey side of it but i i I really believe that um this it's we're in a rebuild no doubt about it but it'll be a shorter one two two years three years Mm. maybe even earlier Mm -hmm. um you never know i mean there's so much parity in the league now even with the younger guys coming in right uh they they surprise a lot of people and and uh there's a lot of good hockey players out there, that's for sure. Have you seen much of, I guess, the guy w- people are hoping is the next Kirk McLean is Thatcher Demko? Have you seen much <laughs> I, of him? I, I haven't. Um, I watched a little bit um, at the uh, Young Stars uh, in Penticton and earlier in the uh, the year before training camp, and I certainly liked what I what I saw. And I know um, down in Utica, he got off to a little bit of a slow start, but that's expected. It's a big adjustment going from – college hockey to professional hockey or junior hockey to professional hockey even at the at, at the hl level it's a good hockey league and and the speed uh for the goaltenders especially and defensemen those are the two the two positions where it takes a little bit longer um but then he came on and and uh, had, a, had a great uh, uh second half or um two quarter or two quarters of uh, of the year and and um you know I'm, I'm sure they're expecting for big things whether he's up next year or they're going to give him another year i don't know um markstrom uh, is here obviously along with miller do they re-sign miller i don't see why not 
I mean, he had a wonderful year. Uh, to me, he was the MVP next to Bo. Yeah. Him oh. and Bo, for sure. Yeah. That's the bright spot, the workload yeah. he the, he had. Yeah. Well, you talking about like this, the, the the you know the struggles going from junior to the AHL, the NHL. Like, what was that like for you? Like when you went from the OHL? Yeah. Um, well, I had a chance uh, right from OHL to go play my first few games yeah. with New Jersey as an eighteen-year-old, um, uh, eighteen and nineteen-year-old. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, I got a little bit of early experience, but but uh, my first full year in in, in uh, professional sports, I played most of it down in the minors with the Maine Mariners. Um, you know that we had a plethora of goaltenders right then. So that that same year, I had myself, Craig Billington, Chris Terreri, okay. and next year after that, uh, Sean Burke was was coming in. So um, um, that Marty Brodeur uh, kid showed Marty, up a yeah, he, he came up a, a wee bit later, but uh, <laughs> um, it was a good system yeah, in New Jersey. Well, it was. Right there, I mean, yeah. and, you know, that's to, to be honest, that's where you that's where you start your that your team, or you draft from the, the goaltender out. And if you if you can uh, collect a, a good amount of goaltenders and defensemen, they become commodities, right? Exactly. And so yeah. you can you can trade for certain pieces, and and that's what they ended up doing. C- uh, poor Craig Billington. Uh, him, him, myself, and Trey were drafted in the same year. Craig went uh, second pick. He was like a real high pick, which was very odd really? for goaltenders back then. I went sixth round, okay. and Terry went seven or eight. Um, they brought Craig up uh, as an 18-year-old, and he played almost a whole year, uh, and, and then sent him back to junior. Yeah. Um, Craig, for two, two or three years, was – Team Canada's World Junior goalie for a couple of years, so he had success mm-hmm. obviously in in World Juniors and and some in in the OHL and in um, in playoffs. So yeah. he was the guy at the time. Um, and then a fellow by the name of uh, Elaine Chevier who came out of the blue. Mm-hmm. He was the <laughs> University of Miami of Ohio, <laughs> and he became the sacrificial lamb for yeah. for quite a while. Poor guy, but he was a workhorse and he yeah. he played very well for them um, with with a bunch of goalies that kind of. Uh, you know, alternate back and forth, myself included, obviously uh, Chris and and, and uh, Bill are guys like uh, uh, goaltender Hanu Kampuri, Carl Friesen, mm-hmm. uh, Sammy St. Laurent, um, gosh, I can, who else is there? <laughs> uh, Bob Sove. You know, you can go down go down the line. Uh, prior to that, I was going to camp, so Chico Resch was still playing Holy and Ron crap. Lowe. Yeah. So, you know, so that's that's how old I am. <laughs> so what was what were those like, you know, just, you know, because we've never played in the NHL. What is the first game like when mm-hmm. you get the start as an 18 year old? Well, I got called up. Uh, there was mm-hmm. like there was three games. My first three games. There's three games left in the season. And was there were they in the playoffs? No, no, Hunt? Gosh, okay. no, no. That's the years when, you know, Gretz was calling the Mickey Mouse organization. Oh, right, all that yeah. kind of stuff. So, um, no, they were fighting for uh, first overall draft. Yeah. <laughs> So let's uh, put Kirk in. Yeah, well, it Give almost came, it almost came down that. So I, I get called up, and, and we're in um, Quebec. Mm-hmm. I, d- I didn't play that game. I just sat and watched. And then we played the last two games back-to-back against the Islanders, okay. who were just coming out of their, their dynasty era. So they had everybody still, you know, from Billy Smith out to uh, Mike Bossy and Pod Van yeah. and Nystrom, everybody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we go into Long Island the first game, and it's like, Four nothing after ten minutes for them, <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, get the tap on the shoulder. Okay, kid, on you go. <laughs> so I, I I go in and and I can remember my first save was a breakaway against Clark Gillies, <laughs> and I made the save, and then uh, I did okay. We lost seven two or something like that. So I let okay. three goals in and mm-hmm. two and a, two and a half periods or so. Okay. Next night, back to back final game. It's fan appreciation night. And yeah. At the Meadowlands, I get the start. So things are going pretty good, you know. I'm t- bu- uh, Billy Smith's talking to me during the warm up. He's oh, really? playing. He's going, right, "Kid, just relax, enjoy yourself out there." Yada yada yada. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, w- things are going great. We're going into the third period. We're up uh, five three. Okay. Going into the third period, we end up winning the game nine <laughs> seven. <laughs> <laughs> it was a win. Hey, it was w, a win. All a w. A double hey, w was there. And your first win. My first win. <laughs> yes. And and. Uh, Unfortunately, my parents weren't there to see it, but I did have friends that yeah. uh, that drove up and and were there to to uh, to witness it, which was which was a, uh, a nice feeling for me. I would have lo- obviously loved my parents to be in there, but yeah. it just didn't work out that way. And but at least uh, somebody from the neighborhood was there. That's awesome. Yeah. When you get traded to Vancouver, like, because you say that you know the Devils were in that kind of darker mm-hmm. days and Mickey Mouse days, as mm-hmm. as Wayne put it, like, 
Do you, is it a positive feeling? Going it took to a lot of heat for that, and then he oh, obviously yeah. apologized. <laughs> I mean, but it's it's a, it's, a, it's you got to take heat for that. Yeah. I mean, that's a tough comment to yeah. make. I mean, that's a proud organization. Absolutely. I mean, it probably Wayne Wayne doesn't say things like that very often, if at all. It mm-hmm. was just something that probably just came out, and mm-hmm. um, maybe in the, uh, there was a the heat of the the, the conversation, and yeah. maybe a, it was a. A quick question after a game, and he didn't have enough time to just kind of cool off and think about something. Kirk, I understand if you got some <laughs> gripes with with Wayne. I oh mean, no, <laughs> I've, you're listen, in a lot I, of highlight packages. I love Wayne, and you know, I, he's you know, I consider him a friend, and um, you know, we he's there's two two guys, uh, um, superstar players that you know I've been around and and know uh, mm-hmm. and are the cats meow and that's Wayne Gretzky and Bobby Orr. Just these guys are incredible people. Um they're just true professionals and at the end of the day, one of the guys. They really love hanging. They like telling stories. Yeah. You know, the odd adult beverage. Couple um, pops. But that's they, that, that's where they feel comfortable mm-hmm. is amongst is amongst their peers and, and they're they're um I don't want to say um shy you know out in the general public bobby more than than yeah. uh wayne you know wayne handles you know extremely well that's all he d- he does but bobby's kind of a he likes to stay behind the scenes and he he's not the, he's not he's not super comfortable um in the spotlight well yeah and he just he likes that privacy exactly yeah, yeah. but those two guys like wayne's is a, you know we laugh and giggle like when he scored his 802 um I always tell him that you you know he was selfish because we had to stop the game. Yeah. <laughs> Gordy's there, make the presentation, and you know it's all about him. So he laughs. Oh, come on, Max. Come Let on. me he said we won the game. Yeah, we won the game. And if I remember correctly, a lot of people don't remember Pavel scored his fiftieth goal that same game too. But it's uh, it's all about the eight oh two. He goes, Mac. That wasn't even the that, that wasn't <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't my favorite goal on you. My favorite goal is you remember the one I batted it out of the air on you. I said, Yeah, Wayne. I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah, you're still making me <laughs> trying to forget here. Let me like I know he was Wayne Gretzky and he was at that level already in in L A. But like, are you are, is the other team or are you cool with them stopping the game for that or is oh, it like? Of course. Yeah. I mean, it's history. It's yeah. history in the game. But he was uh, again the, the gentleman that he is. He came over to the bench and he thanked out every one of us for, you know, being patient oh, and, that's and, and okay, doing yeah. that. So that's that's something you don't see. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously the cameras aren't <laughs> on you. Um, he's he's uh, he's a true professional and and uh, that's just the type of guy he is. You know. See, I mean, you talk. You know, he's like he likes talking about all the goals he scored. And you, is there somebody you just really hated to play against? <laughs> That really yeah, Mario Lemieux and Pierre Ye- <laughs> Jager. Well, I think a two, lot. Two guys, you know, obviously when they were playing together too, I was like, oh my gosh. But <laughs> big guys, tall guys that that long sticks, long reaches, and I just I, for some reason I just couldn't figure them out. But uh, having said that, my first shutout was against Pittsburgh, and you know, Mario Jager wasn't there yet, but Mario was there, and that was here in Vancouver. So he always held that against you. He's like, yeah, I'm going to make yeah, the rest of your yeah, career exactly. living hell. Lucky we, yeah, lucky we didn't play them very often. <laughs> You got. I, yeah. To uh, be fair, a lot of goalies had trouble with yeah, those guys. When you mentioned that they gave you trouble, yeah, yeah they did uh, okay and, for themselves. Yeah, and Mario, you know, we all know what type of player. Can you imagine if he wasn't, uh, he didn't get sick or mm-hmm. wasn't, uh, yeah. you know, injured with his back or whatever? Uh, right. Who knows what he could. If done. anyone could give Wayne a run for his Absolutely. money, that would be the guy. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of money, we have to we have to <laughs> pay our bills on the show. We have a sponsor, Kirk. Okay. Do you have a printout? I, I, I don't have a printout, but I have just a sponsor. Or we have we have a bunch of okay. Good. We're trying to get apothic wine, <laughs> but they are not <laughs> playing well. Okay. Are you doing this one? I'll do it. I'll do okay. it. Right. And because I can ask Kirk this question. Kirk, with all the options out there, why is it that so many people, including local sports pros, trust their eyes to image optometry? Do you trust them? Not anymore. <laughs> you can't see a thing. Especially, especially when I'm reading. Oh, do I you can, wear I glasses? Can, no, I don't. Oh. Reading glasses. Oh. You know, it comes out. Fifty-one. I'm gonna be fifty-one in June, wow. right? So this is what happens when you get you, to. He's like, I'll just get the ones from the pharmacy. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you buy you buy a load of them and I place them every room. Oh my right? god, my dad does the same thing. <laughs> either sit on them and break them or whatever. It, he likes to reach behind the couch and he's like, "There's a pair of glasses." Yeah. <laughs> I know what you're. I'm only at one point five, so that's not bad. <laughs> Don't worry, I am. Yeah. I hit thirty and things <laughs> just went downhill. I've got these glasses now. Well, nevertheless, I mean, Kirk doesn't trust him, but we do. But why? It could be the <laughs> online prices. With brick and mortar service, it could be the direct billing, or it could be the only uh, ones to offer a direct eye, a doctor's eye exam, and a complete select uh, pair of glasses for just eighty nine ninety five. That's an unbeatable deal that will ensure you catch your next match in glorious HD. 
I mean, what else would you expect from uh, the most affordable eye, ch- eye care chain in uh, BC? Certainly not clearly contact. No offense to your whoa, buddy, whoa. buddy Trevor hey, there. We might, we might need other sponsors down the line, right? What if you have Trevor on the show? <laughs> We've been trying. <laughs> TC doesn't want anything to oh, do with no. that. <laughs> um, image Optometry, the official eye doctors of the Canucks. PMAC and Pucks on Net uh, online at image.ca or image.ca. Imagine more for less. Uh, we didn't even do our plugs at the top of the show. <laughs> Make sure you follow us on Twitter. Pucks Net's here. Pucks Net Ka. Um, some jerk has our. T- I don't know. We, do you have, are you on Twitter, Kirk? <laughs> I am on Twitter. What's your Twitter handle? Uh, one Kirk McLean. And are you? I, I, one Kirk McLean. I follow same, him. Same with Instagram and Facebook. So he tweets same. workout photos. He's he's still in good shape. I think well, he can still one, be playing once in a while. Not Quit very sucking. Up. Was just, oh. That was more because it, of the T-shirt I was wearing because we did that Canuck Country Rocks oh. for. Oh, okay. Okay. I thought they were treadmill selfies. <laughs> yeah, oh no, no, no. <laughs> it was all about the T-shirt. <laughs> so some some jerk has our has the pucks on net Twitter handle. Right. So and he hasn't tweeted in years. He tried to get it. So our Twitter handle is pucks on net ca like our website. Okay. But when you say it out loud, it sounds like you're. Saying, <laughs> saying, saying, pucks on that car uh, like a scent, like a crow would make. Yeah. So that's why. Not Mark Crawford. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so Wait, that you do the you, yeah. That's why there's a, a uh, crow. Give him a puck. Give him a puck. There, yeah, a but puck. isn't it um, one of the one of the radio stations? Uh, am I allowed to bring up any radio stations? Yeah, we ten, bring up everybody. Ten forty. That they they do the uh, the, the car car. The tw- yes, yeah. they do the car. Somebody they brought that. The that's call? in the the BMAC uh, mode. Our car. And uh, yeah, yeah. It's Rye Rye the Twitter guy. Yeah, I think they ripped us off. Yeah. I've heard a, a couple people have messaged us, and I say <laughs> I got I got I got to go back and look at the dates on yeah. that. But we, they do it. Uh, they do it pretty much every segment. We've been Jeez. doing this for four years. Yeah. We t- we own that. Call. Imitation yeah. is the sincerest yeah. form of flattery. Oh, Kirk, yeah. it's good to know that you've started our next Twitter rivalry <laughs> which <is> with uh, <laughs> with. Uh, <laughs> um, with uh, TSN 1040. I like that he's some jerk. <laughs> <laughs> That's a he, little harsh. He is. You know, if he's you don't know this guy. Actually, Kyle said Kyle. that it was him. Yeah, he said he owned the account. <laughs> <laughs> that crafty bastard, Wellwood. He is a jerk. All right. Okay. Unless okay. he's passed away, then God rest his soul. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. No. Uh, I want to talk took a turn for the worse. Yeah. I want to talk about. This podcast goes dark real quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about, uh, we were talking about 13 Reasons Why. Do you watch that on Netflix? <laughs> I don't. No. Okay. Don't. What are you watching? <laughs> what am I watching on Netflix? Yeah. River Nothing Down. lately. I'm not too <laughs> impressed with uh, the Canadian content. Okay. Um, on the Canadian Netflix. It's a rough ways. one, yeah. Yeah. You so hard to find. Because we love CBC I mean, shows. Yeah, <laughs> okay. She's I'm usually shot. just looking for the movies, and the movies are like the same yeah. movies forever. Yeah. Y- you know what the Canadian Netflix reminds me of? It reminds me of like that bargain bin of DVDs yeah. at the grocery <laughs> store. You're like, I've seen Austin Powers too, yeah. like a thousand times. Yeah. Why is this still here? <laughs> uh, I want to talk about uh, current goalies for a second. Um, Jake Allen famously, um, he struggled in the regular season, and they basically told him, go home and figure it out. Right. And they didn't bring him on the road. Um, he came back, and obviously he's, he's having a great run in the mm-hmm. playoffs. I'm just curious if you ever had a streak in your in your career where it's just like, you know, it was a rough patch, nothing's oh, going right. Absolutely. I mean, it's probably not going to be the last time it happens to yeah. him. Um, I never had a coach go... <laughs> Go home. Yeah. When you think about <laughs> Have it. Have you ever heard of that? You know, yeah, that seemed like a new yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, you know, he's their goalie of the future, also, or their goalie now. And what do you do when they say go home? Well, <laughs> I don't know. Never do happened. You so you, you, you'd you probably mean? be a little stunned and go, "No, I'd rather work it out on the ice." <laughs> yeah. and, you know, and you know, in practice and. And uh, if if, if, if you're not going to play me, I still want to be involved with yeah. the team. Yeah. I want to be on the bench. I want to. I want to. I'm still on the team. Right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. That's, <laughs> well, that's the question. It's like, am I still part of your team, or am I? Should I be looking for jobs in Russia? Uh, yeah, ex- <laughs> exactly. That's a that's an, an odd one. But if it, if whatever floats their boat, I guess if that's that's uh, what just, happens. I'm just curious. Like, yeah, a rough patch in your yeah. career where it's just like nothing's almost, going you right. Go through it once a year. Yeah. Really, yeah. I mean, uh, you try to obviously limit it to a short period if you can, but it's going to happen. It happens with everybody, not just goaltenders. Right, everyone sucks in January. Uh, it, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there there is there is there is times in the schedule where yeah. you're just like, oh my god, is, uh, you know, can we just push ahead a little bit? Right. Here? When was that for you? Um, or when did that come up in a season? I, I always. <sighs> I always found it tough at the beginning, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. You know, there was a couple of years, well, three or four years where I had good stretches and yeah. uh, at the beginning. But it was just, uh, for some reason, you know, we, we'd usually play at well, we training camp. It would be, you know, twice a day at the yeah. beginning. And before all the CBAs changed, then it finally became into three hours a day and yada, mm-hmm. yada, yada. But we'd still be playing 
10 exhibition games, 12 exhibition right. games. And it was like, okay, now you're tired of that. And yeah. then, and not that we played in yeah. all 12, but, um, and then you just want to get the season started and then finally it gets going and then you just, you, you try to get it going. <clears throat> What and are you your thoughts can't. on uh, yeah. exhibition games in China? Oh, I think it's going to be great, you know, especially if I get to go. <laughs> 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 but uh, no, I, you know, it's a it's a world game, and, yeah. and and it's great for the exposure, and we need to get it out there. We have a huge community here, obviously here mm-hmm. in Vancouver, along with the South Asian as well, right? So you never know. Maybe there be there might be something in in um, you know in the future in, in that area mm-hmm. as well. Hopefully there is. Um, because we we really need to grow this game as much as we can and get it out to, uh, to all communities. Right. Did, well, speaking about growing the game, I mean, did the Olympic announcement kind of surprise you as a, a former little player? Bit. It did. Um, you know, just because of the success it has been, I think, uh, um, you know, just for the, for the world. Uh, whether that, I don't know if it's in stone that they're not going. I think yeah. there's still a little bit of a gray area. Um, so hopefully that gets figured. I'd like to see them there. Um, uh, you know, I understand where the ownership's coming from as far as injuries, and but if they're going to do the Canada Cup or the World Cup, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's mm-hmm. all dollars and cents, yeah. right? I mean, it's yeah. whatever's going to bring in the most right. dollars is is where they're going to go. But uh, there's no difference in playing that every two yeah. years or every year, whatever they want to do it, than than the Olympics, which are every four years. Right. As a goalie, if you were playing now, what would you? You know what would you? Uh, what would be harder? I think they should get rid of the All Star Game. To be honest, well, we all do. You're speaking. You're <laughs> speaking. <laughs> well, it's, a, what, what, it's turning into a farce. Ever right? well, ever since the you know, ever yeah. since the early '90s yeah. with the nice striped jerseys yeah. that well, and Trevor it's wore. The yeah. bizarre format I like those changes yeah. every yes, exactly. year. It's it's hard. There's no consistency. No, I mean it. it, it it's a little like the draft lottery. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean they 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 they. they they say that the guys get out there and excited. I mean, I'm watching those you know, the three on three and everything. Mean, they're floating around there just as much as if it was five on five. Yeah. You know, when it, they try to put a, a a money factor on it, and you know maybe the teams that make it into the finals of that yeah. might play a little bit harder because it's you know they can smell the, the dough right mm-hmm. there. But but outside of like John Scott, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I was they're say. they're just giving well, the money money yeah. to the trainers or the equipment staff, like well, guys exactly. that could that deserve it. Exactly. Yeah. And, and you're right there because. Well, they have a, a long enough year with what they do, and then if you know they're lucky enough uh, for them because <coughs> they're they're honored to do it uh, to to uh, train or or coach in the in the All Star Games. It's uh, you know it's a lot of a lot of preparation, and you know especially for those trainers, yeah, and the, and the equipment guy, <laughs> the, equi- the equipment guys especially. Oh yeah, they they are in, they deserve <laughs> it's that. It's crazy, yeah. like, you know. But like I mean, like you, pl- how many All Star Games did you play in? Was it two and. Based on what you played in and that level of play in those All Star yeah. games compared to what we've seen in the last few years, which has just been next to nothing. Like, yeah. I mean, Dave's beer league game that's going on <laughs> right yeah. now might be is probably more yeah. intense than the, I mean, the final I, game. I know what they're they're trying to do for the fans and and you know, but it just to me it's I don't know. I'm just it's not interested. It's tough all, to watch, you know. And I think I think the whole skills competition thing throughout yeah. the league, when each team does it in their own, it's kind of wearing out as well. Right. You know, it's yeah. again. I understand why they're doing it, but it's just it, they they need to incorporate something else here to, to you know to get to everybody excited. But um, um, when I when I was in my my f- the first one I played in, there was only two goalies. Really. Um. So it, it was me and Mike Vernon, <laughs> and we played in Pittsburgh. Okay. And I had to go against Jeremy <laughs> Geiger and <laughs> Mary Lemieux. Mike Mike started because he got voted in. Yeah. yeah. Mary Lemieux four goals in one period, and I'm in the first period, obviously won the car that game. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you got to be kidding me! And then Mike had to stay in for another half a period, and then oh. I go in. And of course, those you know those games get run up to you know 14 13 or whatever mm. if you're lucky i feel yeah. like there were a couple that went up to 20 back well, in the day. I didn't, we didn't get to that well, <laughs> glad but uh that was the first year in pittsburgh that was 90 91 okay remember, so 92. yeah was that the 75th they, year they incorporated the uh um the skills competition yeah, yeah. that was the first year and, yeah. and i ended up winning the goalie portion of it. so you know i have that claim to fame. <laughs> not all bad well yeah. it's been rough for the, you mentioned the <laughs> skills competitions yeah. they've gotten a little shaky lately poor markstrom well, that's did you it. see I that mean, th- here's another risk for getting injury yeah. injury you know not just uh the skills competition yeah. in your own your own local uh, uh club team but even in the all-star game because it's become so gimmicky with like chariot race with <laughs> well, wigs and yeah. costumes but and the that, games yeah. themselves too and the all-star game or now the three on threes yeah. you, i mean you're getting these outnumbered situation on goaltenders and the goaltenders mm-hmm. are you know i know they're 
they're flexible and yeah. it's and, it's and athletic. But it's pulled groin city. Let's be big honest. time. Yeah, big time. Yeah. Also, there's no um like there's no level of eliteness anymore because I can't tell you which goalies went to the All Star game this year. Well, it's it, the All Star games are you know they're the fans but so it's popularity conference right you know contest i mean the yeah the, the usuals are going to be there but then there's some players that should be there that aren't there and some mm-hmm. players that aren't so but it's the it's the fans game and i we all get that and, yeah and, and you know ultimately they're they're paying the dough so they can pick who they want to, to go yeah uh, i got a question for you uh because you played in florida were you playing in the new building or the old building the, uh both well, how, how was the rat situation in the old <laughs> building? Um, I didn't see one, <laughs> uh, unless we scored. Scott Mellenby yeah, took care of that yeah, for you. Yeah, who's an, uh, a friend, an old teammate, minor, yeah. minor hockey back in Toronto. Really? Yeah. Um, his uh, he, We played in, um, two or three years in minor hockey, and mm. at the time, his father was the producer of Hockey Night in Canada. Really? Okay. Yeah. So that's how that all, Peter Puck and all, if you remember all that, yeah, that's yeah. all his idea. The grapevine was was his idea. Okay. He produced the grapevine as well. So I actually was on the original grapevine out of, when it was in, uh, produced out of Hamilton. Were you like a kid or were you like uh, a... Like no, I, I was pro. Oh, okay. You know, yeah. It was a second year pro or something like that. So it was it was quite a neat <laughs> neat thing. I love the, yeah. I, I, I love the grapevine. I yeah. go and look them on YouTube and just like Don Cherry hosting a show yeah. in a bar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, re- that's a recipe yeah, for success. It was, a, uh, it was a fun thing to do. It was really a fun thing to do. And, and, uh, and there's another guy, Don Cherry, who I, I you know, love him he's you know he's a he's a character without a doubt but yeah. you get him away from the the tv camera and he's just a wonderful dude well i i mean i'm you know m- not I'm saying an, he isn't when he's on camera. oh no yes yeah. <laughs> i'm an i'm an outspoken like i love don cherry yeah. coach's corner when it comes on it's uh, everybody yeah. shut up and yeah. the tv goes up he actually tells us all to shut <laughs> up yeah, yeah. John cherry Look, he's on at his house and it's just it's like yeah it's like i would love to hear him on a podcast where he doesn't have eight minutes turning into seven minutes turning yeah. into five minutes i'm like he has a lot to say and right. i'd love to hear him talk for yeah. half an hour or something well that, you know that's what because they have a short time yeah. you know that's why him and ron work so well together because ron is just incredible right so yeah. he can he can read what grapes is trying to get mm-hmm. out and <laughs> help him along a little bit like, oh yeah but grapes is what 83 years old now yeah. i know it's amazing what do you see his blood jacket <laughs> no, no, I didn't see Jeez. it. I saw what he was wearing tonight. Bring that up. He uh, he was wearing a white he was wearing a white suit jacket yeah. and it's got blood all over. Oh. It. Well, and I don't know if he thought what, it was blood, what, but it looked like it was splattered okay. with red. Yeah. It looked like paint splatter. Okay, paint splatter. <laughs> was yeah. he trying to get a message across? There? I think the message was draw first blood or something. Uh, or okay. you know, I think he took Ron's uh, metaphors and, and and similes and puns and yeah. he put it into a into a suit, but it didn't really. Uh. Kirk's looking at it right now. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> that, was it Halloween? <laughs> no, this was like that two was, weeks ago. Oh, was it? Okay. it was at uh, the last Montreal game. I think he was oh, okay. accused of uh, the death of the Canadians or something along <laughs> those lines. Of course. I mean, somebody, somebody's going to create something out of nothing. <laughs> he had a Habs tie he on, though, didn't he? Oh, did yeah. That's exactly what it yeah. is, yeah. Now, did you see Coach's Corner? Because I... You know, I'm assuming he was talking about Sydney's situation, yeah. and I didn't. I saw it in the background, but I didn't hear what he had to say. He chalked it up. To, uh, it was kind of remember when uh, Brandon is it Brandon or Brandon Manning took out Connor McDavid yeah. with the mm-hmm. accidentally on yeah. purpose in the corner. Yeah, he's basically saying that, and yeah. he brought up a good point that I didn't think of when you watch it. It's like he didn't go out to do it, but the opportunity was there. Right. Yes, and yes, then. Yes. And then you look, and he doesn't look down. Yeah. He, he's looking straight, like, yeah. "Am I going to get killed? Who's on the ice that I have to?" Yeah. Well, I mean, there's two. There was two infractions. Ovi's. Oh uh, my God! Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, he, he he was about to two hand him pretty hard, and he mm. kind of let up a little bit, but still, the intent was up there, and it was high. Yeah. yeah. And that uh, that threw Sydney off, and that's why he kind of fell. And then, like you said. Um, when people fall into you or something like that, it's, things happen so fast. So your your, audit, your your instinct is to protect yourself yep. right off the bat, and that's probably what he's going to say was happening. I just tried to protect myself, and unfortunately, his face, you know, just happened to be there. <laughs> he's pushing. I, I just yeah, he, he did. He pushed this it, way. It, it yeah. wasn't just put it up, but you kind of leaned into him, right? It's mm-hmm. bad. Like I mean, and then he's he's fallen on the he falls on his yeah. knee, and they're worried about that, yeah. and like. Yeah. It came out today that he's got a concussion, but like yeah. that was a tough thing to watch. Yeah, and you know, hopefully it's not bad mm-hmm. where he's uh, out for the rest of the uh, uh, the playoffs, let alone career. I mean, it, this is his third concussion, right? Yeah. At least, yeah. You know, he already wears a helmet has uh, mm-hmm. foam that's as, as thick as the the cup we have going <laughs> here, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, we need him in the game, and 
you know, he was a big factor this year. Absolutely. He's a wonderful hockey player. What are you taking these? Have you been watching any Predators games? I have not. Yeah, neither of you know. none of us high. It's it's a bit of a dull series, but it's just like yeah. you just that's a well oiled, that's a well oiled machine right there. And that PK Subban Shea Weber trade's not looking well. Like it's looking fine. I mean, Shea had a pretty good um, season. Yeah. Season, yeah. and you know they played okay in the playoffs, but um, he can't score any goals. I don't I don't know what PK's uh, stats are like in the playoffs, but uh, he uh, he was uh, whisper quiet in the first round, and then yeah. he's come alive in this round. Okay. And then he was uh, he's always known to be very uh, lively in the warm up. And Mike Milbury went off on him. Well, you know, PK's, you know, sometimes enough about me. What do you think about me? <laughs> <laughs> so he has that little bit of a reputation going around town. So, so it's uh, he's a he's a very talented hockey player. Don't get me wrong, but right. it can rub some. It on the can wrong rub some exactly. the wrong way. Yeah, yeah and it's yeah. and you don't want to give anybody bulletin no. bulletin board material, as exactly. they always say. Exactly. Uh, I was just curious. Like, I mean, you were playing in Vancouver, and yeah, it was a tough time. What's the or it was a tough time to get traded and a tough thing. Which there were some good years in the middle there. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't a no tough time, years. eh? No, though, the, 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 for the most part, your time in Vancouver was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you get you go you get traded three times yeah. in a year. Yeah, well, that kind of yeah, two in a year. Two well, times, well one I actually three asked to be three traded teams. when I out of Carolina. Yeah. You know, it was a great organization. Uh, they were going through a little bit of transition. Was that their first year? Uh, in first Carolina? or second? Okay. So we're yeah. we're we're. we're Living in Raleigh, but playing out of Greensboro. Okay. So we'd have our pregame skates in in Greensboro. Yeah. And then travel an hour and a half to to Raleigh. Mm. uh, Excuse me. From uh, pregame skates in Raleigh and then traveling to Greensboro. Okay. For for your game. Yeah. And I mean, it wasn't the the greatest, but, you know, they did everything they could to to make the guys feel comfortable until the new rink was Mm -hmm. built. Okay. um, All the way down from giving guys golf memberships at one of the the courses. Mm. Mm-hmm. And uh, anything they you needed to do, you know, if you wanted to go and have day rooms uh, um, in Greensboro mm-hmm. and pregame meals and everything out there, if you yep. wanted, which most guys took advantage of. But that's tough, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was it was just a, you know, I, it was still a shock to my system. You know, I still was you know devastated to be quite honest with you yeah. from being traded, mm-hmm. and um, you know just still had this going through my mind. And Trevor Kidd was there at the time. And you know he was he was you know playing. I I went there with actually with bruised ribs, and um, um, you know it just it just didn't feel comfortable for me. So you know I asked to be traded out of there at the trading deadline, and and um, and uh, they 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 obliged, which I you know, have to thank them for. You know it was, yeah. n- it was nothing like I said against the uh, the club and the organization because they really were classy people and. Mm-hmm. And then I went down to to uh, the Panthers, and and then uh, ironically found myself after the the short time that I was there, yeah. uh, the first year, in the last twenty games or whatever, yeah. mm-hmm. um, playing with Kevin Weeks at the time, who was there, and, and oh. Van Beesbrook, uh, <laughs> to the next year playing with Sean Burke, who I got <laughs> traded for. <laughs> I'm uh, I know I was like I was uh, today I was like that's a big Vancouver connection. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, it's like and, and I it was and like of course Mike. signing f- as a free agent with the Rangers my last two yeah. years. Yeah. What's it like? I mean, actually, I, I had a question. Like, Beezer like, was a Canuck for a cup of coffee he was, too, because he of was, the it, entry it, draft it, stuff. It was, it was the uh, no, the, or the expansion, uh, expansion draft. Yeah, sir, yeah. yeah. Mike Fountain was on one of those teams <laughs> too. Yeah, Mike, yeah. Um, well, I had a lot. Of, um, and, and they just preceded Luongo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, there and who else? Uh, there was uh, um, um, Mason. Uh, Bob Mason, who's the goalie coach for uh, yeah. for Minnesota. Oh yeah. Um, Troy Gamble yep. who came in, who was a high. Dr- he was the number one draft pick to Vancouver. Yeah. Um, where did and where did Alex Ald come through? Aldi came in. I never played with Aldi. He came. We got him from Florida. There you go. He was from Florida. <laughs> um, I think in one of the uh, in the. Maybe the Sean Burke trade. I don't know. Maybe oh it was the Sean Burke trade. Well, I know Ald went to Florida. He, he started. He started there, didn't he? I know. He, well, he was traded there for Luongo. Oh, I don't know. I can't. I can't. <laughs> he just kind of. He kind I of. I thought he started there. Yeah, I think he was know. drafted. Yeah, and then he went back in yeah. the Luongo deal. Uh, <laughs> you're, uh, Man, he that's played a long in, time he, ago. Uh, Aldi played in Ottawa too, and I don't even remember <laughs> playing in Ottawa. <laughs> <laughs> you're around. It's funny you bring it up. Like you guys must have been playing at that Greensboro Coliseum, which yeah. holds like twenty one thousand people. It's a huge place. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was. It was odd. It wasn't. It, was meant, it wasn't built for hockey, no, was it? No. So, like, I don't know if it was built college for basketball or oh, something. Yeah. Like, you know, um, that's you know, in, in, it's a Bible Belt, right? Yeah. All through yeah. there. So, 
um, in college basketball, obviously, you, you, you know, you've got Wake Forest, you mm. have North Carolina, and you mm. have, um, um, what's the other one there? Uh, Wake Forest, North Carolina, and... Gita? You're the sports expert. Uh, <laughs> Duke, Where's Duke? Duke. Duke. <laughs> That's where Duke is. Yeah. So huge. And then NASCAR. Yeah. yeah. Massive. <laughs> were the Panthers there yet? The Carolina Panthers? Uh, they No, they weren't. I don't think they were. But the Hornets were. They were there. Yeah. Yeah. And then, but, uh, yeah, they were the Hornets. Yeah. And then WWF. Yeah, oh, that's what it was all about. Well, that's how I knew. With the, that's how I knew about the Greensboro Coliseum. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait for that outdoor game in tractor Carolina. Pole, tractor pole and all that kind of stuff <laughs> with the NASCAR huge. around it. You're like, no, no, don't go to the tractor pole. <laughs> the, you know, the, the Kings are in town. Come, <laughs> to, the, come to the Hurricanes yeah. game. Like, yeah. But like, what was you know was was there support there in the in the Carolinas? Yeah, there, there was, there was. Uh, um, you know, the team was on a, a little bit of an upswing. Uh, they, you know, they ended up winning the cup not too long after that. Mm-hmm. Maybe. 2003? Oh, six. Six. They oh, went six. to the finals. Oh, they went to the finals. That's right. Yeah, with, with Herbe. Yeah, yeah, and your boy. And, uh, um, Detroit. They played, De- they played Detroit. Yeah, they the got finals. swept. But, I mean, they had a hell of a run. Yeah. And then, uh, and then of course, when it, mm, was it 06? Yeah. Yep. yeah. The bizarro year. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, they, uh, you know, then they, obviously, mm-hmm. places like that, like winning teams. But yeah. now they can't even, I don't know if they put 5,000 people in, in the stands anymore. No. Did you like playing down in uh, Florida? We talked to Florida? Kyle, and he loved San Jose. He said of all the places, yeah. He well, San Jose is just a great place to play. That's true. Like what okay. an atmosphere! It's it's probably one of the best atmospheres in the league. I've been there, okay. row two oh, next to the Canucks bench. I love it. They just have a good old time. Yeah. Um, in Florida, um, it was okay. <laughs> it was okay. Um, we weren't that it, we weren't that great. That you know they obviously had the run, and then it was kind of in of a transition area there. I, I you know, they I think that at Does that time they relied a lot on the snowbirds. Okay. That Does out. that they also have to do with being like removed from sort of a city like Miami? Because Sunrise, whatever, yeah. in Fort Lauderdale, a little bit, a little bit out, yeah. yeah. It's it's probably, different, probably, a different crowd a bi- out yeah, there. bigger arena. You know, the Miami arena was uh, not in the best place at time. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, you know, I don't know where everybody parked when they were down there because <laughs> it's in a bad area. A That's bad area. Um, it's f- um, you were there. Trevor had the NASA. Wasn't yeah. that in a rough part yeah. of town? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, NASA is just way out in the middle of nowhere. Oh. It's not, not really a rough part okay. of town. Okay. If, I, safe. if yeah. I know my American uh, NHL uh, arenas in terms of uh, bad neighborhoods, um, Chicago, Chicago yeah. and the Joe. Yes. Um, <laughs> I work with a few guys that do like replay for, you know, for Sportsnet. And they're saying like, if you're, if you're at a Red Wings home game and if you don't have a ride or a cab and you're there for half an hour after the game, it's like. Yeah. If everybody's, there's a people mover and all that kind yeah. of stuff that can get you through everywhere. But yeah. if, if you're kind of stuck there without a cab, it's not the greatest place to be around. Yeah. Okay. Chicago. Yeah. Um, you know, the old stadium was, is used to be right beside the, uh, it was basically the parking lot now mm-hmm. for the United Center. Um, really bad. Yeah. You know, I think it's cleaned up a little bit now, um, which is great. But uh, usually these, th- you know, the older arenas, it's the land, right? Cheaper land. So that's where they, they, they built these stadiums. Yeah. So um, unfortunately, uh, um, the neighborhoods uh, are a little sketchy, but, <laughs> you know, this re- this these rebuilds and all these different, th- all these yeah. cities, especially Detroit, um, you know, they're now kind of cleaning up. A, a well, I was just going to say, those arenas are super old. It was probably yeah. a different city when they were built. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Pre-war. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the Joe, um, which is gone this year, yeah. this yeah. will be the final year, w- the, the, the old Olympia was right, bes- was not too far around the corner, yeah. so that's where, like, Gordie Howe played out of and all okay. that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Um, probably back in the day then, it was happening. Motown, right? I mean, yeah. this is what was going on mm. all down there, and, and then... Uh, whatever recessions or whatever hits uh, we you know, all know about the societal changes yeah, in the uh, yeah. in america <laughs> in the 60s and 70s yeah. and so then i mean you can use new york as a, you know harlem mm-hmm. was a great place to go to at one right. point and you know it's not the best place uh where were no. where were you living when you uh were playing in new york i lived in connecticut greenwich right. connecticut really um because our practice facility was in rye new york mm-hmm. which yeah. is kind of right on the border oh, okay so the old playland <laughs> is where we we practice out of, and it was great. I mean, it was uh, um, it's all you needed, really. Yep. You know, it's uh, we had a nice locker room and mm-hmm. and everything, and it was a cold arena, which is always good to practice in, and, and it was close to home. I mean, you can only about ten minutes up the highway. Yeah, yeah. That uh, was a great. That was you know, if, if you remember, Wayne Gretzky always said every player should 
experience one year in New York, and he's he's right. I yeah. mean, it's mm-hmm. incredible place. Yeah, <laughs> incredible place. I mean, there's so much to do, not just in the in New York area, but the surrounding areas. Uh, it's just a, a a great part of the world. Um, the people are great. They can be a little bit <laughs> harsh, <laughs> but they you know they 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 love winners and and most of all they love. Just a uh, uh, you know good try, so a good effort, and they'll applaud you for that. If you're putting in a good effort every night, mm-hmm. you know that's that's what they want. Uh, um, you know that, but they can be a little harsh. Uh, they can they you <coughs> know you, you always say uh, wives and mothers and you know kids you never right. you never bring up, but <laughs> they would sometimes bring up uh, some some stuff, and you're like, come on, man, you don't you know. <laughs> Where well, else are fans harsh? Because we've been critical of Boston and Philly the last oh couple yeah. of weeks. Well, Philly, yeah, Philly's another place that uh, can get a little, little, little harsh, and, yeah. and Boston um, can be as well. Um, mm. But uh, whether it's just an intimidation factor, which it probably is. <laughs> I mean, most people are great. You see them afterwards, and they're just. It's just all in. We like to keep batteries on hand in case a Flyers game breaks. Yeah, okay. (laughs) I was gonna say, did anybody any Flyers fan hit with a battery? (laughs) No, you know, I and I always had success in Philly. I always had some of my best games. I don't know what it was. I just maybe the sight lines of the old Spectrum. Mm -hmm. I got a chance to play in the newer the newer arena, uh, which was almost identical to the Spectrum the the way they they built it. But uh, maybe it's because my one of my boy boyhood heroes, uh, Bernie Perrant, was there watching. So maybe (laughs) it has something to show off. Um, what was the go on? Just before we get too far away from New York and you talked about the fans and stuff, was it for you going back there after everything that happened in Mm. 94, you were almost the guy who single, well, I won't say (laughs) single-handedly, but you were one of the key things that almost stole that cup out of that It was kind of strange, you know, walking into the locker room and seeing all the photos on the wall and everything, but... uh, the the people were wonderful and the and and the the organization uh, you know the players that were there so Brian Leach Richter and and Graves were there yeah Mark was Messier still here came back, he came didn't back. They? yeah um it w- you know they were great the, like I said the people were were fantastic and um it was just a great place to play there's so much going on there not just sports wise I mean at, at the end of the day hockey it's probably on the on yeah. the last page of the of the sports until everything else is done. Yankees mm. are the number one there, without right. a doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and and then you just kind of pick your way down there uh, to to whenever the yeah. season mm-hmm. uh, comes on. But as far as uh, any other celebrities, entertainer, they're everywhere, and and um, but they treat you they treat you like gold. You you walk into restaurants or or wherever whatever establishments you're going into, and you're pretty much don't have to pull your wallet out. I mean, everything, they just comp everything. Did yeah. Mark Messier take you to the China Club? Um, what is Mark that? Mark did, but I've been to the China Club back <laughs> in the day. <laughs> Mark, Mark, please Mark, Mark tell did, listeners yeah. like myself, what is the China Club? Well, it's just, it was an old, uh, just an old um, uh, <laughs> bar. It was, okay. a, it was like one of the biggest clubs. Uh, yeah. Okay. And, and a story. This is like, you know, going back to, well, just after Studio 54, yeah. Limelight, Palladium. <laughs> all okay, <that> gotcha. <laughs> yeah. uh, stor- a story, ca- anyway, I asked, because yeah. Kiprios told a story about yeah. uh, Mess would be in there holding court and making <laughs> yeah. road teams. They can, they can yeah. wait in line for a little yeah, longer. Yeah, and yeah. It's okay, just like, oh, I understand. The- <laughs> uh, one, w- I, uh, I really liked Theo Fleury's book. Uh, I haven't I haven't read it. I, you know, I just know my name's mentioned in it uh, once or twice. Oh, I I didn't. I don't remember your name, but uh, <laughs> I, no, I, I'm sure it. Is, I'm sure it is. But I'm just like, you know, like you know, he's in a much better place now, and yeah. he's and he's doing a lot of very good. But I'm just curious, like, what was playing with him in like those were tougher years of his career, and I'm just super tough. Like, what was it like? We had a kind of a dysfunctional team. Yeah. Uh, on paper, Stanley Cup champions. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, maybe too many Chiefs. Oh yeah, enough, you know, not enough uh, Warriors. And mm. um, it, it w- for someone like that, not a good place to be. Okay. Uh, be just because of what's accessible there and uh, the people that are, you know, you know, eyeing out on He's whatever type of whether it's professional athletes, celebrities, yeah. or whatever it may be. And you can have a and, lot of fun there and spend yeah. a lot of money really quick. Yeah, they were yes, very mm-hmm. fast, and and he did. Yeah. And um, you know it. it it's uh, you know put him in a dark place, and maybe I don't want to say it tarnished. It tarnished his uh, not his image, but his his career a little bit because he was a great hockey player and Fantastic. had a wonderful wonderful career. And um, you know it just it was made it tough on you know his family at the time. And 
you know, and the, the big family, which was the, the New York Rangers. And, but mm-hmm. he was there was a couple other guys that were in a dark places then yeah. too, and, and it yeah. was, uh, you know, really good guys. And mm-hmm. you just you know you wanted to help them out and, mm-hmm. and keep them on track, but you can only do so much, right? Yeah, and they have, yeah. they're 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 adults and men, and they gotta you know kind of take the bull by the horns themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I want to finish things up. I just want to ask, uh, when you were playing in Vancouver, I, have a lo- I I find just locker room dynamics fascinating. So I'm just curious, who was running the Canucks dressing room when you were there? Who's the, who's, is Trevor's got the C on his well, sweater. Well, yeah, I mean, I, there was a few guys. There yeah. wasn't necessarily one. You know, there was everybody, to be quite honest with you. That, that sounds kind of, you know, cliche-ish, I guess. But um, obviously Trevor, you know, was a big part of it. But, uh, you know, I like to think I played a little bit into it. I wasn't a big super vocal guy especially when if i was playing i, I was, was pretty that, yeah. pretty quiet for the most part okay. like to goof around a little bit and yeah. loosen up a little bit if i wasn't playing maybe <laughs> a little bit more goofy um but you know dave babbage jerky lume dana mers and mm-hmm. sergio momasso mm-hmm. um murray craven uh you know jeff Cortnell was it was uh, you know he was the biggest prankster for <laughs> sure so he kept everybody loose uh you know in the early years he had steamer there and had harold snaps i played with so there was a lot. Uh, Paul Reinhardt when he came yep. in, um, so we were blessed to have a lot of uh, you know leaders that uh, not necessarily had the the A or the C on their on their, their sweater. That uh, Pavel in his own right, you know, he, he wasn't a, obviously a big talker mm-hmm. in the room, but uh, he would come out with the odd funny thing. Uh, <laughs> we couldn't understand, him, but, you know, but yeah. then he would just go out and lead by example on the ice. So, yeah. um, you know, it's just we were a really tight group and and. You know, everybody seems to um, draw themselves to the 94 team. You know, eight, we, we did an 82, uh, 94, and then obviously 2011. But for some reason, the, the 94 team has this has this big place in everybody's heart. I don't know if it's the age of everybody or what it, what it is, but... It might be exactly that. You know, and, and it's it, it was a lot different with us in the community. Not yeah. saying that the guys aren't big in the community or do things in the community, mm-hmm. but now with social media and all that kind yeah. of stuff... It's it's so tough for the guys to, you know, let their hair down and mm-hmm. and, and well, let I, loose a little before, bit. I said before, I'm like, I may not recognize the player out on the street, but I'll right. recognize their dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Is that Troy Stetcher based <laughs> on yeah, his dog? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But you, you bring up, yeah, like the connection you had. And it just made me think of like when, when Pat passed away a couple mm-hmm. of years ago, like, you know, all of the, those key players from that team yeah. were just like here in droves, yeah, in, yeah. in and it just it must have been that impactful. Of yeah, a, of a group. well, I mean, it was not just for us, but uh, you know, whoever he touched throughout his hockey career, you know, from Philadelphia to Toronto to mm. to wherever he he was, uh, uh, Edmonton. even Edmonton when yeah. he coached yeah. there, and you, you know, yeah, I think he played junior hockey in Edmonton as well. So, mm. um. He was just an incredible man, and and for us in that '94 yeah. team, he was like a second father to a lot of us, and, yeah. and really um, a mentor, and 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 taught us, you know, from '80, well, me anyways, from '87 to '98, uh, how to be professional, yeah, and how to approach the game, and and how to be a person away from the game, and you know, in the community, which a lot of us are still heavily involved with and love to do. Um, it was just uh, it was a big loss, and <coughs> I got a chance uh, with myself, Cliffy, and um, Jim Sanlak was back. We went to go, you know, his hockey, his Hall of Fame induction. So that was, you know, that was important for me to be there, and I really enjoyed that night. But uh, yeah, I certainly missed. There's no doubt about it. He was the, the big Irishman. Uh, was a was a, a good man. Uh, on, a, on a more positive note, do you have a good prank to, story to tell about that Jeff Cornell pulled? <laughs> or somebody I mean, on oh. Jeff maybe to get him no, back. No, nobody would ever do anything with Jeff <laughs> because they knew that would be it for the rest of your career. <laughs> oh. be going after you. He would just do, you know, the, you know, cutting ties or, or um. sewing sewing your, your pockets together. You know, you, oh, you yeah. just sew your pockets <laughs> together. Do you have time to sew your oh, yeah. pockets together? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He'd nail your shoes to the to the <laughs> to the floor or to the to the wood uh, wherever your shoes went, he'd nail you. <laughs> I mean, it, any anything you just you couldn't you couldn't close one eye without him <laughs> doing something, especially because we flew commercial back then yeah, too. Yeah. So you didn't want to fall asleep on the plane because you'd have half a tie when you woke up, mm. or you'd have you know uh, shaving cream on your head <laughs> or something like that. He was just it was nonstop. But there's there's been other characters. I have one, Nick Fatu, if you remember him. 
he was a tough guy who played in, in, in New York for okay. most of his career. Um, um, he was he was a famous prankster too, but uh, the one that some of the guys told me about in New York, some of the, the alumni guys, is he wasn't playing, he was hurt. So um, the guys would come to Playland and park in the back, and then they would bus to wherever they'd have to go from there. Mm-hmm. So he would go to great extent uh, uh, to to actually have a jack like a car jack jack up the car mm-hmm. put the cinder blocks underneath the underneath the car but lower lower the, the car down <laughs> so that the tires look like they were touching the ground <laughs> but you couldn't see the cinder blocks <laughs> then you get in your car and try to drive away and you couldn't oh, drive no. away Jeez. You know? <laughs> right. yeah time got, to do oh, this exactly. that's impressive that's like, those exactly. are really involved pranks. they're really involved <laughs> exactly but uh you know the other ones are like you know the the, the baby powder in the blow dryer and oh, all that kind of geez. stuff. Oh, fantastic! And, you know, <laughs> the goofy stuff like that. Yeah, just anything. we used to have we used to have tons of fun on the uh, uh, in the airports because, <laughs> again, yeah, you know we'd turn a, a flight to Calgary into five days because something would go wrong. They call <laughs> we called it the Canuck Zone, right? Because uh, you know a, a, an hour and fifteen minute yeah. flight would turn into something. <laughs> so we'd have. You know, we'd have guys with crazy, with like crazy glue a, a quarter, and watch people try and pick it up. <laughs> or back then, we had dollar bills, so you know the the uh, um, either fish net or yeah. fish line or, or uh, <laughs> um, uh, dental Den- floss yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and pull it, and people would you would see them, you know, goofy lo- little stuff like that, uh, Vaseline and pay phones which they had back then <laughs> you know and then somebody would get the vaseline you know yeah you know just and then like they look really up. really tired stupid yeah and they'd look childish up and, and stuff. there's yeah. the canucks yeah, and yeah the yeah. whole team laughing away <laughs> and stuff and they'd be all choked and what are they gonna, what are they gonna do you right? guys just beat the oilers <laughs> yeah. wasn't yeah. that enough yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but yeah but, it, uh, good times i mean it, it's <laughs> something that they they don't get to do that much yeah. uh, because they're, they're they're in and out of the cities. Mm-hmm. You know, they they got their charter flights yeah. and away they go. So it's not very often they get a chance to uh, get on the road and 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 bond together. Yeah. You know, they they probably do it in other ways now, and they do do it mm-hmm. in other ways. But uh, you know, we had some good times. Mm-hmm. Well, it seems like camaraderie was a lot. Well, it's, hit it's more huge. back then. Um, and you you talk to any of the older guys, and you know even the guys now. It's that's that's what everybody misses. Of course, they miss the game, they miss com- mm-hmm. competing, but it's the camaraderie and 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 hanging with the guys, and and uh, you know whether it's going out for lunches or or dinners or whatever it may it may have been. Um, you know, it's that's what it's all about because you become a big family, exactly. right? Everybody's yeah. your brothers. Yeah, and like uh, I think it was the Flames that were struggling this year, and. They they were yeah, taking the gully tra- they were taking them in the train yeah they're taking the train from like Montreal to Ottawa and yeah. it, and he's just like take your headphones out yeah. talk mm-hmm. to each other work it out yeah and have a beer well no he took away the beer <laughs> oh yeah and he's like he goes to the, the the vets he's like is it a big deal that I took away the beer we want that back and they're like yes oh, yeah. and so they you know what they they started had a couple beers they talked it out they worked on the problems you know they the anxiety the uh, the stress went down and then they went on that streak so it's yeah. like it's, it's it's key yeah no it it it, it is it, it, you know, it, you don't have to go out and get hammered, <laughs> the right? The change I mean, up? Yeah, <laughs> oh, which I've never heard of, <laughs> by the <laughs> way. <laughs> I've never heard anything like that. But, uh, um, you know, if it's just go out and have a, a, a couple of drinks and tell some stories and, and like you said, get whatever's on your chest, and yeah. have, you know, get yeah. it out of there. And, and it goes a long way. Um, you know, so, so yeah, it's hockey has had that beer culture labeled on them, but it's it's it's. There's more than just more drinking it, beer. Exa- exactly. It's just going out for beers as exactly. is, is, is you, you talk it out and you learn yeah. more about people. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. 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 You know. Could I just check in with the change-up <laughs> stuff? I heard rumors that he was hanging out with your K. Lume and a couple of the guys. Do you know who might have given him that well, idea? <laughs> well, what it was is, is um, I missed it because I was doing something else, but there, there was a t- uh, an alumni lunch with the main, the main okay. players. Yeah. So, so I think Yerky w- may have been at one of the table, but then some of the main guys mm-hmm. may maybe not. But I don't know. Maybe he just. I heard it was an alumni like prank almost that they told this guy this is what we do. Oh, maybe. And then maybe. he took it for was real. Well, well, no, no, it wasn't. <laughs> but the change up, I, I've never heard of that. Well, it sounds like a term. It's like the way he described it. It sounds yeah. like something you do in the eighties. Like, <laughs> how like, you can't play hungover nowadays. No, no. gosh, no. I, I mean, it's no chance you could do it. You know, maybe back in the days in the seventies and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, if things were going going bad. The, the coach would probably walk in with a case of beer and put it yeah. in the locker room and say, "Okay, get at it, guys." You know that type of thing. There was, you know, I'm, there's been times where there's 
been lunches that yeah. have turned into dinners, right? Liquid yeah. lunches, yeah. yeah. All that Ryan type doesn't of stuff. Team let his podcast Team drunk. meetings. <laughs> no, you don't do it. You can't no, do you it. don't want to do that. <laughs> you don't want to do that. But uh, um, that's something you definitely don't want to get into <laughs> is, is, you know, obviously having... <laughs> too much alcohol in your system <laughs> <laughs> the day of a game. Needless to say, well, yeah, I think that's good advice for youngsters yes. out there. Yeah. Kids, Kids out there, yeah. if you're listening. Yeah, exactly. Don't drink and podcast, no. or in Gita's case, lay down. <laughs> don't, don't drink and don't play hockey, according to Kirk exactly. McLean. Exactly. Irish hurlers don't know the story. On yeah. the, the, that, now that we've clarified the change up, and, and <laughs> I, I think that's a good point to wrap it up. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, Kirk, thanks a lot for joining us. Yeah, thank, you. thank you for having me. Um, this is great. I, uh, not, that, not that we didn't want to talk about it, but... We hear a lot of this, you know, you, you know, we just wanted to kind of ask more about your career and not just, hey, that save against Robert Reichel was <laughs> awesome, right. but you, you had a hell of an NHL career, so that's why we kind of want to touch on other things, but, you know, all come back mm-hmm. full circle to the Canucks, mm-hmm. so. Well, thank you. Yeah. So I appreciate that. You didn't even bring up the, the Robert I think I brought it up. Did he, I bring it up? Did. Or you just brought it up now? He just he, brought, brought it up. Okay. We had a, we <laughs> Like you mentioned saves against Calgary. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But I know we. I, I'm pretty sure a lot of us uh, have an immense respect for you. We uh, watched all those games, but we yeah. wanted to cover some topics. Yeah. That maybe no, I, get you know, I, I, I love that. And, and hey, I mean, it, it's a part of uh, you know uh, me history. in history, and and uh, it was a defining moment in my mm-hmm. career, without a doubt. And and if people want to talk about it and they they like to say oh, I remember where I was. It's yeah. a pretty good feeling. It's when they stop talking about it. It's when I have to be concerned. You're like oh. remember. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll bring you back. We'll talk yeah. about that <laughs> next <laughs> time. But uh, yeah, no, I, I immense respect for you. The first time we met, I waited while you were doing the broadcasting gig pay per view, and okay. I got your rookie card. <laughs> uh, okay. Not that you would remember that, but no, we do have respect for everything you did for this uh, town. I appreciate so thank that. you. You know, I respect what you guys do. This is stuff, stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. it's what it is, and. And uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I grew up in Toronto, yeah. but this is my home. It's been my home since I basically got traded here in 87. So I've actually lived here longer than I have in Toronto. And yeah. consider myself a Vancouverite and a West Coaster and, and uh, w- wouldn't change it for the world. It's just a, a wonderful place. The people have been great to me from day one. Mm-hmm. And it's the least I can do is continue on and give back to the community and, and You're hang out with people like you well I, we had a I lo- we had a lot of fun tonight and we went over an hour that's how <laughs> that's how good of the conversation was so we'll do our quick plugs and we'll wrap things up uh if you want to follow us on twitter make sure you follow us at pucksnet sierra pucks on uh, oh, there you go <laughs> again as, as kirk points to the puck pucks on net were you a workload goalie or did you uh did you did you thrive when there was 45 yes, shots tonight? absolutely I, I, you know i was definitely one of those uh goaltenders and i think most goaltenders are like that i think it gets you into the game mm-hmm. and i love to get a shot Mm-hmm. Not a difficult shot, but a shot or a couple shots early in the game, get yeah. the feel of the puck and and whatever kind of jitters you had. And I didn't, you know, I wasn't one. I got I got jitters the night before thinking yeah. about visualizing that. But the day of the game, when you're in your element with the guys, it's just kind of went away from me. So, um, but yes, I, I enjoyed the I enjoyed the workload for sure. Always always curious about that. Uh, Kirk yeah. loves pucks on net. That's what there I got from go. that. There there you go. Go. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Uh, yeah, so if you want to sp- uh, make sure you subscribe in on iTunes, rate and review on iTunes, leave a comment, five stars, that'd be great. Again, if you want to support the show monetarily uh, for some bonus content, you can head over to patreon.com slash pucks on net. Uh, Marshall from Portland. We're big in Portland, Kirk. <laughs> I like it. He just uh, he pledged five bucks a month, so nice. you can get uh, extra stuff. So, uh, yeah, uh, Marshall, Kirk, uh, thanks you for that on our behalf. <laughs> and, uh, Thank you, Marshall. <laughs> and if you want to el- you know, support the show, yeah, just like, like us on Facebook. Um, all that usual jazz, and just uh, yeah, word of mouth, and uh, and uh, that was about it. Is this where we drop the mic? You can. Oh, I don't know. Bam. Bam. <laughs> well, <laughs> we've got some money coming in. We can replace Woo-hoo. the mics. Kirk just did a mic drop, so we got into there. Good night, everybody. Bye.